So I'll uh, get us started. So welcome everyone. I'm Sarah Chilton, the Director of um, Co Communications and Policy at Community Rail Network. Um, so um, we, this is the second meeting that we've had the honour of having uh, Emma and members of her team from Railway 200 come and speak with us. Um, so thank you to Emma and I can see Paul on the call as well. So um, thank you. Um, and I just wanted to say we are recording the proceedings. Um, I know last time members found it really useful, so we're going to go along with the same format in terms of I'll hand over to Emma. She, Emma, she's going to give you an update of where they're at with things and then we'll we'll take any questions. We've just got an hour, um, so we'll keep it brisk, um, but we are hoping to have these um, every other month. If we feel we want to increase into every month, then Emma has already said she's willing to do that. So. OK, so I'm going to hand over to you, Emma. Is that right? I don't think I've missed anything, have I, Alice? We're not doing introductions because there's so many of us on the call that would probably take half of the meeting time. So over to Emma. Hiya, can everyone see my screen OK? Yes. Yes. Great. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how many were of you joined the first uh, session, uh, so I don't sort of want to, you know, do the same <laughs> same again. But if there's anyone that would uh, is sort of new, um, I can I can do sort of a, a recap of some of the, the slides I'll show through. I don't know if there's anyone that didn't join last time on the call. OK, Hazel. OK, well, I'll um, I'll just I'll talk to these slides, but I think what I'm I'm really keen to sort of get from these sessions as well is hear hear from 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 you as well about what you're thinking, what your questions are. Um, and, and how we can sort of support or, or, or we've worked together, really. So that's kind of what I'm I'm sort of interested in in hearing about uh, fr from you guys as well. So that's I'll kick off then. Um, so in terms of an agenda for today, um, I'm going to do a quick sort of recap of the programme, a bit of an update on where we are. Obviously, it wasn't that long ago since we sort of last met. So the sort of our current work is sort of progressing um, in that in, in that way. Um, and then there's sort of a couple of opportunities that um, or, or things we're hearing about that, you know, you, you might like to get involved in or think about or consider. So that's sort of how I'm sort of framing my bit. But then obviously really happy to take your questions and have sort of conversations um, around what you've been thinking and feeling and might be doing. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's today. Um, uh, just to sort of recap for those that weren't on the call, um, obviously uh, Railway 200 we a year long uh, nationwide partnership led campaign and that's kind of why I'm here today is it's all about partnerships and, and, and working together to, to mark this celebration, um, looking at the past, the present and the future. Um, and, and really is that that I guess it's that message I want to get across that sort of everyone is Railway 200. Yes, we've got a national programme that we will be, you know, a work that we own and we deliver, but it is all about being the sum of, of all those parts coming together and everyone making it their own celebration. We're not being prescriptive. We have our themes, um, but it but it very much is, is an opportunity for you to use to profile yourself, your heritage, your work, inspire and, and, and do all the great work within the communities that you, you already do. So it's sort of an opportunity for all of us. Um, and from a from a national point of view, we, you know, we're, we're talking to our, our rail industry and, and sort of those bigger national partners. Um, and we hope it will be sort of a really a, bi a big moment um, throughout the year and also, I don't, um, there's quite a few other anniversaries in 2025. The Railway Museum will be turning 50. So naturally, they're doing a lot of activity around that um, it, under the umbrella of Railway 200. Um, and also the Railway Industry Association is 150. Uh, so they're obviously doing a lot of sort of celebratory activity. So hopefully there is that kind of positive outlook <laughs> for us all next year. Um, and I know there's obviously been challenging times for the industry, but, you know, hopefully this will be an opportunity to be a bit more positive. Um, just to sort of recap how it sort of works, how does that partnership led campaign actually play out? Um, there's you can see there that there's the national programme. That's what I'm working on. I'll talk to you a little bit about what's in, in that bubble in a bit. Um, 
and then there's some great work that's taking place in the culture and tourism place. I know that that's a sort of a, a, an activity that some of your partnerships are, are involved in and that sort of um, tourism and sort of sustainable um, travel type piece. I've seen some some great stories over the last few weeks with work that you've been doing in that space. So I'm really keen to know a bit more actually about, about that. And that also links into an opportunity that I've been talking to with the Institute of Tourist Guiding as well, which I'll come on to as well. So keen to get your thoughts really on, on, on that space and, and what more could be done or, or or things that you've got coming up that can slot into to that sort of sustainable tourism place. I'm obviously inspiring and cajoling the rail industry to get behind this and do their activity. I'll give you a little bit of an update on that in a bit, but working with potentially, you know, working and bringing together all the train operating companies to get them to put a bit of a focus on that, as well as the, the broader supply chain, um, which we're, we're sort of making progress with. We'll be supporting Heritage Railways, really helping them make the most of the opportunity. Um, then there's the locally led activity, which I guess sort of falls into your area, that sort of communities on the ground. Um, I've, I've already seen one of one of the partners I'm working with. He sent me a picture of a little um, poster on his lamppost. So uh, you with the talking about the Railway 200 and that they were doing local talks. So I, and I really think there is sort of that that sort of momentum building and, and the, the emails that we get into our um, inbox are from a lot of people seeing this as an opportunity in their local community. So I think, you know, we can be confident there's there's definitely an appetite and interest as the word is slowly getting out there through all our sort of engagement work. Um, the nine month festival in Stockton and Darlington is 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 sort of firming up now. Uh, on the in September, we'll be doing a joint announcement with them, confirming what their nine month schedule looks like, as well as what our national program will look like. Um, and in that, it would be great to start flagging some of those community activities in that program as well. So in terms of your planning um, and things that you'd like to sort of talk about or be included as we sort of build towards that announcement in September is, is, is good to have that on your radar. And we would like to show, you know, a diverse range of activity. So, you know, a good chunky section in that on, on what this collective group is doing would be great to profile within that. Then there's obviously the then and obviously, but internationally, we're not forgetting that, you know, there's lots of international partners and networks that are keen to to get involved uh, from Argentina to Poland to Japan. We've had engagement with we're talking to the British Council as well. So there's lots of um, eyes overseas on this as well of, and how they can use this as an opportunity to talk about their own heritage and their part within that 200 year history. So that's kind of how we see a, a, a year long campaign of activities happening with ev everyone having playing their part and doing uh, activity in their relevant to support their relevant organisations. So the national programme, uh, that's the sort of stuff that my team are delivering. Obviously, they, um, we've got we've created the brand. We're in the process of doing a toolkit. Uh, which will be for all partners to use with with assets, uh, much like you do your Community Rail Week toolkit, something hopefully easy and accessible to use and apply for your own channels and purposes. Our website, as hopefully many of you have been on, I know we had a, a lot of uh, sign ups to our newsletter that is uh, live. And we have actually got, um, you know, a facility on there to promote events. I'll come on to that in a bit. Um, our social media and, and sort of PR and comms, that's sort of really been driven out of our team. But the content is is not just ours. We want to articulate what to the 200 year story is, but in punctuated with that, um, we want to shine a light on communities and all the good work you do. So, you know, we, we've got a lot, a lot of time to fill. Um, so we, we want to make sure we 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 tell that whole story, um, com, you know, in the right way. We are doing some brand partnership work with um, targeting sort of consumer brands, looking at how to reach new audiences, new younger audiences, all inspiring them to have um, career, um, inspiring them about careers in rail. And, and we're sort of working on what that actually looks like and who the targets with and what that activity might look like. So there's more more to come on that. Um, 
then we're doing commemorative merchandise range, uh, which we'll be able to offer wholesale um, opportunities with through the Science Museum Group. Uh, we're looking at a, a national charity partnership um, and obviously our exhibition train, which I put at the end of the list, although I know it's at the top of everyone else's list, but I'll come on to that. So that sort of is kind of the stuff that we're working on and delivering. And then there's obviously the stakeholder engagement to inspire others sort of alongside that. Um, so since we last met um, from a PR and com, um, marketing comms update, we're doing a lot of engagement with travel trade media at the moment, looking at all the rail industry awards, all the existing stuff that already happens, how we integrate Railway 200 into that. It's not necessarily about creating loads of new things. It's about looking at what we already do and, and integrating Railway 200 in, into that. Um, as I said, we've been doing international engagement. Our social channels went live. Um, and we're also really sort of pushing on that broadcast programming route. You know, we're not paying for any programs to be made, but we've had a lot of people come via us uh, with commissions that we're trying to work with other with the sort of national broadcasters on. So we're we're hopeful that um, at some, during 25, there will be some good broadcast uh, content out there. So we'll let you know um, how that's going. At, uh, discussions are all in flight at the moment. Like I said, our website is now live um, and there's an opportunity to sign up for updates and our interactive map. You can register your event or activity. And I think what I wanted to say on that is if you're thinking of planning something, but you're like, well, I don't have the dates. I don't really want to submit an event form yet. We kind of understand that. So what we've done is we've created um, a link which I can share with you in these slides. It's more of an expression of interest of running an event. So it's not saying it's definitely happening, but it's an idea. It gives us an idea of the types of things that might be happening. So as we move towards September, we can get a sense of what's going on, um, and obviously recognise that dates might change. But I think that that for us is a really important part of how we start coordinating what or understanding when things are going to happen. I think we we re recognise that between January and March, probably quite a time. Uh, we think a lot of things will be happening during the summer as we ramp up to September, where obviously the spotlight goes to Stockton and Darlington and, you know, all the big stuff that's going up in there. So in terms of opportunities, we're sort of thinking that the first half of the year, especially at the start, it would be a, perhaps a, a, you know, a good time to to do some activity there might be, be less going on we might get a bit more sort of focus on that so again just sort of mindful in in sort of planning or thinking about things um that's sort of what, what we're thinking but it would be great if you could just um use that link and put that expression of involvement um form in again it just gives us an idea of, of what's happening um so that would be really really helpful um our social media is up and running I think we we would love to get to a thousand followers by September. Um, I think we'll be able to do that because I, we launched and overnight we tripled and we're we're slow. Every time I meet people, every time we do things, things go up. So that's great. Um, obviously, great for your support. Uh, notice there's obviously been other um, community rail partnerships out there. So yeah, just a real call to sort of you know um, you use our you know follow us start talking about plans that you have or things that you might need from people we get quite a lot of good engagement and our followers might help you and and it's all about bringing people together so the more we can do that of the better so thanks for you know your support in doing that um moving forward our newsletter is landing in your inboxes <laughs> you always get a bit nervous when you hit go on those things. I'm sure you understand, Sarah and Alice. Uh, it's our first one. Um, there won't, there's no groundbreaking news in there because we are where we are. But it's just another indication um, that we're getting up and running. It went to almost 500 people who have expressed interest in hearing more and staying close to the program. But it's a good way of us again communicating with people. We did mention your community rail week in there, so top marks to us. Um, but it is again. It's for you to have information for us, but it's also for us to use for you. So if there's things that you I think would be of interest um, to to, uh, to uh, yeah, it, it's stories or opportunities. You know, we have that now as a channel to use moving forward. So um, 
just to let you know that's up and running now. Um, and also, I'd just like to say thank you as well, because that piece on championing and talking about it and having conversations with your local partners really does work. And I'm meeting Transport for Wales um, in a couple of weeks, which came from um, conversations about Railway 200 um, um, in, in, from the, the, for, in the community rail network. So just to say, you know, please do um, pass people on my way um, and great to know that Transport for Wales is, is getting behind this as well. I don't know if there's anyone from from Wales with it on this forum, but just to flag that that um, is underway. Well, I, I, I'll meet with um, Louise. I don't know if anyone knows her or has had dealings with her or um, but again, if 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 there's any information on that or you would like to sort of be noted or, or mentioned, then please do let me know. Where are we now? Um, yes, um, our piece of work with with Tox, we are um, getting a lot of uh, a good group of them together. We all have appointed Railway 200 leads. Some are more forward than others in terms of plans. I don't know. I was keen to hear from this group, you know, how that kind of engagement is going within your sort of regular meetings and, and conversations about joint activity. It'd be good to get some real time feedback and experiences. Uh, is that working? Is there anything that we can do or suggest to this group when we meet the next meetings, the 28th of May? Um, I don't know if anyone's got any thoughts or comments that are on, on how things are going with their local talk. We can come back to that or, or think of that. I don't know if um, anyone's been speaking to them. We've had a brief conversation at CRM with Northern um, and yeah. they, they've put us in touch with who their lead is. Um, we've not necessarily worked around the other the other talks yeah. yet. I don't know how others have gone on. Martin, have you have you had some engagement? Um, well, we, we've, we were due to have our, an officer, um, CRP officers meeting in the Anglia area um, with Mike Lamport tomorrow. Oh, yes, oh, Mike, oh, yeah. Um, the 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 only thing uh, Alan has um, invited lots of individual adopters to that meeting as well. So we we think it's going to be probably more prudent for us to come. Like, that's why I'm here today, really, to, to to get a bit more of an informed background. Yes. Um, because that's sometimes when we have adopter meetings, it it becomes very much a sort of a bit more sort of parochial really so yeah. so i think it's but we're, we're pleased to have obviously mike on board so yeah. um and i'll probably try and make contact with him at a later date but um just one other thing i was just quickly ask was the um is the um social media feeds that you're looking for people to join um what what for example is the twitter feed we've or, um yeah, we we haven't we've only we've we've only switched on LinkedIn at the moment because we're a right. bit we're still in that okay. business to business type Fine. phase. We will be turning on those other consumer facing channels later on in the year. So we're not on there yet. We've got the accounts, but we're not doing anything with them yet. So it's just Fine. LinkedIn at the moment. But again, when they no do go live, we will share what they all are, and obviously oh, through great. it will share what our content plan looks like at the moment as we sort of yeah. start building towards that so and great yeah, yeah no mike's great. part mark mike sort of sits as a volunteer on my team um so he is really yeah. up to up to date and up to speed with everything oh, but if there's great. anything if there's anything you need for me i mean i'll just share you know if you want any slides on the national program or you want to be able to sort of channel that in um you've got my contact details yeah. or sarah can share them please please feel no, free that's, to that's, get in touch. that's brilliant yeah, more than happy with that. And uh, as I say, we we um we, we're sort of trying to formulate. I think what we're get, we're 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 hoping to do to contribute, yeah. but um, also it's keen to see whether we can tap into some of the national uh, sort of initiatives as well. So mm. so that's that's really good. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Paul, did you want to come in? Um, just very briefly on this point, um, the very notable exception from that uh, list of logos is GTR. I work with um, Southeast CRP, I'm the marketing and comms lead. Um, we had a meeting with GTR earlier this week. Uh, they were on the call last time and seemed a little abashed that everyone else was appointing a community rail, uh, uh, railway 200 lead and they hadn't. They promised mm. to take it away. That was at the end of March. We pressed them again and again, 
they said they'd have to take it away and have a look at it. So we're very disappointed that our talk hasn't really engaged mm -hmm. as yet. So anything that you can do, Martin Clark yeah. from CRM was, was at that meeting. So I'm sure he noted it as well. Um, otherwise, we will carry on doing what we're doing at a at a local level and the CRP uh, level. Um, I'm also a, a member and volunteer and former comms director at the Bluebell Railway. So I'm oh. aware there's dis discussions going on um, yeah. there there as well. So, yeah. you know, we, we would obviously like to support anything that the TOCs or our Heritage Railways are doing as well as our own events. Um, mm. But at the same time, if they're not going to engage, we'll just do what we're going to do locally as a CRP. But obviously we don't have the same reach, the same capacity, the same no. marketing tools or or um, uh, level. So we'll be doing local events and, and local activities, particularly with those TOCs, Southwestern, Southeastern. We also work with them cross country and GWR. But um, GTR, the biggest rail operator, nothing there yet so mm. far. Very disappointing. That's, yeah, that's really interesting because I know um, John Beardmore from Bluebell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He um he's getting um in it. Do you have do you do you know John? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's on the board. I um, I yeah. I drop him an email because he's got GTR, hopefully, along with Network Rail coming to Bluebell in June to talk yeah. about what they're trying to do at Bluebell. So yeah. he um it might be worth following up with that. But I'll also flag that to Alan, who's our marketing and comms lead who used yeah. to work um, in TOX 13 odd years ago. So he's been rallying everyone around, but I will mention to him whether he's had any direct links with GTR on that. So let me pick that up as well and see if we can go in that way for you as well. Yeah. But yeah, speak to John Perfect. because he might be able to mention something when GTR come to visit him uh, about what their plans are. And it might just be useful to understand what they're doing and how you might be able to be part of that as well. Yeah, definitely, because they'll have to come through East Grinstead, which is one of our community rail lines anyway, yeah. to get onto Bluebell Rails. Yeah, I would suggest anyway. speaking to John. It might be that you can yeah. find some some mutually beneficial activities and support in that um, as well. So, yeah, but I'll pick up GTR with Alan and see where he's got to with that. Thank, Thank you. you, Paul. And this is the kind of thing I need to know because I can I can make not make stuff happen, but I, I can sort of press some levers and, and try and try and work around things and, and and hopefully help help you guys if there's any blockers basically um so yeah so that that was just to, to note that we are trying to bring talks together you know get them inspired to do activity some are more forward than others but but it's good that we're on their radars i was at the uh, going for growth conference yesterday that uh, great british railways transition teams organized lots of operators were in the room there so um, it, it was good, again, trying to push that message um, to sort of start getting behind this. So we're doing, doing what we can from, from the top up as well. Um, the exhibition train, um, we're still, um, we're, we're uh, works underway for the design of those carriages. Um, I'm hopeful that by September we'll be able to, uh, that design will have been set and part of our announcement will be actually being able to sort of show what some of these carriages will look like uh, so that's uh, lots of hard work going on for that at the moment um, and what I'm trying to do is work with Network Rail on having sort of a, a local a local approach to the the route planning I know there's lots of appetite loads of people want it um, and we're trying to work out the best way to coordinate at the moment really sort of leaning on Network Rail and 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 that's those sort of forums which I would like um, you know that that you to be part of that sort of planning conversation obviously there'll be restrictions on where it can and where it can't go um but that's kind of that's what i'm aiming for we're not there yet but that's where what i'm aiming for uh to do that so please bear with us but um what we're doing at the moment is uh planning what the june to september route might look like we're hopeful again this is all we haven't announced any of this publicly yet because things can change but we're working towards it starting to operate from june next year um and then june to september will be a route that we're kind of um we're looking at now obviously going up to the northeast in for september naturally for the being part of the stockton and darlington festivals like i said this is all still not confirmed this is all still sort of what our ambitions are 
Um, so that's kind of what we're working working on at the moment. And then from September onwards, I would hope that then we can the plans will then be in place sort of region by region as it moves around as to where it's going to go. But working collaboratively on 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 that piece. Um, you know, we're working out what the haulage is at the moment, how that works. It's, you know, incredibly complicated, as you can imagine. It's not something, um, you know, moving trains is, you know, I think, well, that's what you do. But um, there's lot, lots of complexities involved in how, how we operate it and what, what that looks like. Uh, but yeah, so just so you know, the, the work is taking place and, and we are ready. When we're ready to in, engage on that, we, we will do. Hi, Ian. Hi, yeah. And um, just a point is that, uh, when the routes decided for the exhibition train, there is a really good opportunity at Lowestoft, which is obviously the furthest east station in the UK. And uh, the Quarry Lines Community Rail Partnership have their big exhibition space at the station. There are routes available down to Lowestoft for train planning, and there is a facility to lock the train into the station for any length of time as well. Okay. Would you mind just dropping me an email with that on, Ian? Is that all right? Um, yeah, I'll be doing that, but uh, the email should really come from Martin if he's still listening in, as he manages the exhibition space at Lowestoft. Okay. But I'll copy you and Martin in anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. What we're trying to do is catch all, you know, of of the opportunities and uh, within each sort of route and region, and then when we sort of come to looking at it, we've got all of those kind of like expressions of interest if you like or opportunities to sort of consider um so we got a bit of a head start on on some of those so thank you ian hi Anne. hello just wondering how many carriages is it this train going to be there'll be four carriages plus a generator and a loco right, so we're looking at yeah it's just um we platform had a discussion with sarah we talked about using the sidings at halt whistle as, a, as an option so I'll, um, I'll get my colleagues to uh, check the space. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, there'll be some very pra there'll be some practicalities involved, um, yeah. you know, accessibility and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we we will get all of that together. But it, I guess it's good just to sort of have that in your mind about what this thing actually is going to be, and and whether it's you can actually have it um, uh, on on in areas. So. So that's uh, that's our plan for that. Um, and then in terms of opportunities, um, I don't know if anyone's worked with the Institute of Tourist Guiding or have any links to them. Is that, is, uh, is that the Blue Guide system? Yes, it is. The Blue yeah. Badge Guides. Yeah, I've, yes, I have. Yeah, they've mm. got in touch via Visit England. Obviously, we're engaged with Visit England through the DCMS to do sort of an international destination piece. But they obviously have contacts and, and they've been looking domestically at um, opportunities. And the Institute of Tourist Guiding got in touch and said, I'm sure there's something here that we could do. How do we inspire um, our tourist guides to use Railway 200 for local themed historic walks? How can we even do that? Um, so I'm sort of thinking through, you know, how, how do I do that? How do you get, we get that local history knowledge and, and how does that all work? And I sort of just wanted to um, sort of just sort of think about that from from your sort of what you know in your local area. And, and ha if you did have uh, some local tourist guiders wanting to build a local walking route covering in local history, is that something that you could be supportive of to work with would there be an appetite for that again this is an, an opportunity at the moment but um i was just keen to get some feedback really on what you how you think you could support that and if anyone had done it before well sorry i'm just putting in um yeah. I, I worked with settle and carlisle for a while and i know the friends of settle and carlisle do lots of guided walks already and they've got quite a good strong team of walks leaders so but we um but i think it would be a really good idea to because it would help us um build new links with blue badge guides um yeah. because crps don't necessarily have the staff in or the, the volunteers to do this themselves so the more yeah. we can engage to help us the better 
I think it might be worth us at CRN, um, Emma, having a conversation with them as well to see if there's something yeah. that we can push, push out to, to our members. So that would be helpful. So we maybe have a chat offline around that. Yeah, yeah, they've got a few opportunities coming up where we can sort of talk to their tourist guiding community and sort of um, look at look at that. So what I didn't want to do was um, sort of not understand the appetite or capability in terms of supporting something like this. So um, it would be good good to know. So yeah, we can we can pick that up. But 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 those are the types of things that we're getting. You know, people are looking at this from all different angles. Um, so again, those sort of um, all these relationships hopefully can work. Um, I did notice. I was really interested to see the the work that uh, Time Valley had done with the heritage sites by rail, and a sort of maybe understanding a little bit more what sort of other partnerships that you've got that could be sort of re re energized or refocused. Uh, for Railway 200. Hi, yeah, Ian. Absolutely. Hi, one of the one of the organisations that we have worked with that work quite closely still is the Heritage Open Days. They yeah. have Heritage Open Days week, and um, that's a national organisation, so that might be worth looking into as well. We are time so Time Valley Community Rail Partnership. We have we do a Heritage Open Day events. Uh, well, hopefully every September, and. Um, and I know it's not quite in the 2025 diary, but we are this year. We are going to do something about the about our Rail 200 celebrations mm -hmm. uh, during this September's events, because we've got sort of pivotal dates from June 2024 for the development of the Time Valley Railway. So we're starting to drip feed information about celebrations now. Mm. So we're going to be, put, you know, the plan is to put. Um, information boards at every station along the Time Valley Railway about the history of the line yeah, and, and specific information about when that station opened and any work information in it. Brilliant, Anne. And, and maybe that might be something quite interesting, seeing as you've obviously, um, you know, you, you're sort of, you really have thought about this, that, you know, that to share with other partners or maybe one of these calls what you're doing I think you know if I don't know if that's appropriate Sarah I'm just making yeah, stuff up yeah, here as no, I talk about absolutely. it but yeah. you know sometimes leading by example or just giving ideas um might be a, a good way of of doing that I don't know Anne how you feel about that yeah, comfortable with that it's just you know sometimes that you get so many ideas it's finding them you know the ones that work or yeah the ones that you can make work you know yeah and so, what would be what would be great is if on that expression of interest form that we've got Anne as if if you can put some of that in there just so we get a sense mm -hmm. of of what's happening that that would be really helpful because it's it's all good it's all good stuff you know and 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 it you know from our point of view yes we're saying the celebration you know as from as a campaign is the whole year long but you know there is we're out there now talking about it you know so so it it all helps and is all all great stuff that you know that you've got things to start talking about you know now and towards the end of the year is is all is all good um and then the other opportunity i think i'll I'll share these in the slides. It was something that was presented from the the Railway Museum, um, and they're doing a uh, want to do a sort of a piece of work of cataloguing history from a range of perspectives. And what they've recognised is there isn't much from the perspective of the LGBTQIA community. So they're really trying to um, sort of accelerate that and do sort of a people pied and progress type view of history. And what they're really looking for is is people from those communities to share their um, railway history and memories in a, a new sort of oral history archive. Um, they, as I said, I'll share these slides within the deck so you can have a look, a read through and think about, you know, whether there's anyone in your groups or communities that would like to get involved um, and looking at sort of volunteering to tell their, com their stories and their reflections of that. Um, so, yeah, so I'll, um, I'll just, but that they will be in the deck, but that just sort of explains what they're looking for um, and groups um, and that. And there's also got the contact information. And I'm sure they'd be delighted to speak to anyone if you feel that you would like to contribute or, or be able to, to do that. And they've got social media stuff in there. But yeah, the, it's Ashlyn who works on that. So I just wanted to 
put that on people's radars. I said I would help share that. And then if they can collect all those kind of uh, histories as well, that would be something they would be looking to sort of start sharing in 25 as well. So that sort of link, links to links to Railway 200 in, in that way. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stop sharing my slides now because I feel like I've talked for quite a while. But um, is there... I guess over over to any sort of questions, reflections, thoughts, things you'd like to know for next time. Um, yeah, over over to you if 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 that's okay. Any questions for Emma? I think it's great, Emma, because it just feel like from when we spoke all those years ago now, uh, <laughs> things are, things are really taking off and taking shape, aren't they? Mm, so yeah. um, it is it's getting sort of really exciting in terms of the momentum's building, isn't mm. it? So yeah, um, so it's really good to have the, these regular catch ups. So we so. it's in time, isn't it? That yeah. as things are developed, because I know lots of members have been really interested around the exhibition train and mm. different elements. So it's good to hear direct from you as to where. The, where they are where that's at and how they can mm. plug in so I think it's really important that those ex the expression of involvement form is a great way for our members to put markers down as to what mm. events they may have planned and so forth so yeah but I'll, I'll open it up Ian have you got a question uh, it's not so much as a question as an offer um if any of you want uh, historical rail documents or anything of that nature going back to over 200 years um, there's a resource which you can access online at the railarchive.org.uk. I'll put that address in the chat so you know what it is. But basically, there's a lot of old railway documents on there. If you want to use any, just drop an email to info at railarchive, to one word, .org.uk. And I'll be happy to supply either copies. But if you want the original documents themselves, that would require some form of insurance cover to be in place for them. Thanks, Ian. If you could drop that in the chat, that'd be great, Ian. Thank you. Uh, Robert? Hi there. I'm, um, uh, hopefully the microphone's on. Uh, I'm from Swanage. Uh, obviously, the Heritage Railway is part of the uh, Purbeck Community Rail Partnership, so a bit of a hybrid. Uh, great talk. Thank you for all of that. Uh, a couple of questions. First of all, Swanage next year, it's the 140th anniversary of the opening on the 20th of May. So we'll be doing, I'll be putting in a, a form on that in terms of integrating with Rail 200. But the other thing we've heard is that obviously Rail 200, maybe you're looking for exemplars or themes on railway history. And obviously at Swanage, we'd like to make a bid or put a theme in in terms of railways to the seaside. So okay. how do we do that? How do we get in to do that? Because at the moment i'm a bit of lost to see how how we can get in to do that uh will you come come to to me we're building what that like i said that what our themes are how we talk about all the whole massive 200 year story how we carve that up what are the interesting moments to do on that so robert email me okay. um to do that or, or provide give me some kind of something to go with something to work with i can speak to Alan, who's our comms lead, who's looking at how we tell that story and what some great um, examples are obviously backed up with content. You know, what do you have to tell that mm -hmm. story? You know, we're a very we're a small team and we can't um, know everything about everything. Um, so, you know, if you've got that sort of packaged up or or you can, you know, get got some um, images or however you'd like to tell that story excuse me that's a, um a good you know that that's great information for us um so yeah okay. so please get in touch just a final rider to that obviously you've been given a budget and a resource is any of that being devolved down to people to do stuff or are we all on our own in terms of the funding for this I'm afraid you're all on your own I'll be really yes, gonna say <laughs> that. That. Yeah. I do <laughs> actually have to um do some fundraising myself um so it's uh yeah unfortunately um I don't I wish I did um okay. but that doesn't mean to say that you've got um the heritage lottery fund um mm -hmm. they knew have their process has been recently updated there's an, yeah. an eight week cycle uh for up to 250 grand we know that they are at the, this very senior level they know about railway 200 
and um, they are keen to find ways to support Railway 200. Um, so there is, um, you know, tapping in into that could be um, an option. OK, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Hazel? Sorry, took me a surprise there, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, Emma, and uh, I think I know quite a few people on the call. I'm the events and fundraising manager with Commuter Rail Networks. So I work closely with Sarah and Alice and Erin. Um, and I just wanted to, and I'm sure Sarah has already shared some of our thoughts around our Commuter Rail Awards in 2025, because it's our 20th anniversary. Oh. And we um, are coming up to the northeast. I can't officially say where just yet because we, we've yet to officially announce. Um, but we are going to be involving Time Valley CRP, the Bishop Line CRP, and Esk Valley. And we're all we've already been um, put in touch with some uh, venues particularly the Discovery Museum who are running Steam to Green and we'll be encouraging and creating some satellite events around our awards that, that we can align and link in with Railway 200. And I know the Discovery Museum in, is very keen for people to go and, and have some guided tours and things and there may be some other uh, the, some other things going on. But just to let you know, so we, we're forming a steering group and there will be a real focus in the region linked mm -hmm. around our awards as well, which, you know, delighted to say it's our 20th anniversary, which mm -hmm. which aligns really well with it all. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll um, thanks for that, Hazel. That's great to know and a great example of how something you've got already can be used um, and integrated. And just have you um, in touch with the uh, Stockton and Darlington Bicentenary Festival team up there? Um, not not yet, but I think that probably will come through Felicity McNicky at the Bishop Line. OK. Um, yes. We did look at venues. We aren't able to go to Darlington, which we wanted because mm. of the size. Um, that was our primary because we were yeah. in Sheldon in 2006, the year mm. after it started. But there's just no no venues big enough. So mm. we've ended up in the northeast, but not quite where mm. we would ideally like to be. Yeah. I did meet with Stevenson's College at Durham and they said they've got massive venues. I don't I don't know what that looks like in terms of what you need and what they've got. But Stevenson's College. Um, yeah. It was uh, one of the consideration is we had to consider our headline partners as well. Yeah. In, among, in the mix, too, who are Lumo, um, the open access operator. Mm. So, yeah. But like I said, I can't can't say exactly where we're going to be, but. Yeah, we're in the region anyway. In the region. We are. Yeah, and we're going to be encouraging people to travel around the region, you know, both sides of, of the awards as well. And there'll be a programme put together of places that people can go and visit and look at the heritage as well. And yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I know that I sit on the uh, Stockton and Darlington Heritage Board, which I think the Bishop line, like said, Felicity, or I can't remember who is on that. But if, yeah. if for whatever reason you need to get, um in another way or have any more questions mm. because you know i you know felicity perhaps isn't across all the information like i i could be via that so if, if there's yeah. anything um you need on that let yeah. me know thank you emma and sarah sarah's actually on our steering group as well we're jointly on the steering group mm. from community rail network so yeah that'll be great it, it, it sounds we can build up a really good network yeah. around it around it brilliant Thanks, Hazel. Um, Zania, I don't know whether I've pronounced your name right there, Zania, so apologies. No worries, yeah, this is Zania. Um, and hi all, I'm from the Southern Railway Enterprise. And apologies if I missed this because I did join the call about 10 minutes late, but we're looking to roll out and do a lot of STEM engagement as part of our programmes. Um, so I was wondering if, yeah, there were plans for any materials to be put in place around that. If not, I am kind of looking to put together a bit of a STEM activity around Railway 200. So, yeah, just wondering what was there. Brilliant. We um we don't what what we're not going to be creating anything um, ourselves because what we've heard from 
uh, operators and, and the rail industry is it, there's a lot of stuff already there um so i don't think we could add any value you know i'm not an educational expert i don't we couldn't add any value so we're what i'm trying to get an understanding of is existing resources already out there i know through the rail forum they do rail safety week i know network rail do a whole load of schools packs and engagement so i think the trick is is repurposing what we already have in order to do to do that um so that's kind of so we won't be producing anything new ourselves but what i'm hoping to get is an understanding of what actually is out there and how we use those uh resources that currently exist okay cool thank you well yeah we'll have um a bunch of resources put together so if there are any schools in the south like wessex Wessex, london kent um yeah do reach out yeah brilliant thanks very much thank you uh martin Thought about it, just switch my mic on first. <laughs> um, so, um, well, I, I represent the, the Durham Coast Rail Users Group, which obviously uh, impinges on the SDR at Stockton. And I also, I'm also a volunteer coordinator for Grand Central Trains in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm obviously quite interested in uh, seeing what's going on, things like the things like Hazel was talking about in the wider Northeast, whether we can. Uh, keep in touch with those sort of things. So I've nothing specifically to uh, to say other than uh, um, we're trying to see, uh, particularly on the on the Durham Coast stations, other Stockton, Hartlepool, Sunderland, just how we can uh, encourage people to get involved and whether there are any kits for schools to do artwork on stations and that sort of thing. Because we're, we're on the fringe of the S&D yeah um i know that part of the s d program is to is is focusing on school on wanting on education and schools um so i i think you know from in terms of lo local activity it might be worth have you had any sort of um contact or have got any relationships into there martin that i could sort of help help you with and in make well, an introduction for you yeah we've got some uh, some contact with the, uh, uh, the the festival people particularly brilliant um nick nicky halifax and, nicky halifax and so on. yeah yeah uh less so perhaps with the the stockton and darlington uh people themselves mm. okay um yeah if you're already talking to nicky that's kind of the that's from from my side, that's kind yeah, of where where I've yeah, been having yeah, the links in. Kelly, Kelly, whatever her name is at uh, at Hope Town as well. Yeah, we're we're actually going up to my team's actually going up to um, Stockton and Darlington next week for two days to visit the area and see some of the sites where mm -hmm. you know they're going to be doing uh, activity and that. So um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. So if I glean anything from that visit, I'll make sure to feed it back through okay thank you very much thanks martin ian have you got another question comment uh, yeah if anybody wants educational resources i'd recommend approaching the local british transport police they do schools tax mainly surrounding safety and those sort of aspects but they are very generous with their time and their resource pack so if you educational things that you need please approach the local british transport police we work very closely with them in the east. And also there's the education network as well. Um, and Karen Bennett, she produces lots of different materials. So you could certainly link in with Karen Bennett as well, Martin. I can pass those details to you because um, that might be useful as well. And Felicity also sits on the education network. So, um, Anne? A um, couple of things. Um, I can't find Emma's email address and we've talked about emailing Emma. So would you mind putting it in your, the chat, please? Yeah. What's that? Sorry. My email. email. Yes, yeah, certainly. Thank you. And secondly, we talk, you mentioned about themes. Um, yes. We, we've sort of talked about using a the theme of innovation because the real development of the real you know, infrastructure created lots of innovation for both. Absolutely. Yeah. Hardware, you know, you know, the Edmondson ticket, you know, and, and that was just because he worked at, you know, Milton Station, which is now Brampton. So 
I think that's the theme that I'm looking to sort of push forward is mm-hmm. how it created, you know, well, even timetables made people think about the clocks rather than just looking at the sun and the shadows. So, yeah. And that and that's absolutely right. That innovation is 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 so much in line with where we are, and and the fact that the railway has been transformative and innovative in society as as well as just technology and and, and engineering. It, it kind of works across all all of that, and 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 telling that sort of story, um, and what the railways has how it's changed and impacted Britain and people is is part of what we'll be wanting to get across in in that story so and that sounds spot on thank you we've got any more questions paul have you got another question paul have you got another Um, question yeah yeah it was just a a quick question about the exhibition train because i think everyone uh, would be wanting it to come to, to their station, mm-hmm. to their area um, and to their line. Now, I know you said we could sort of put forward various suggestions, but I just wondered, were there any sort of guidelines about or criteria as to what um, you needed in terms of sidings, um, mm. where this train will be um, stabled, whether it needs to be overnight or whether it could be a sort of day visit? Because otherwise, I think we will all send you 80 suggestions of Oh, it'd be great if it could come here, it'd be great if it could come here, but some of them aren't going to be practical. So are there any yeah. sort of criteria that Network Rail yeah. are currently working towards that would at least eliminate or help us narrow down our ideas? Yeah, uh, there, there will be some guidelines. We, we, we haven't got them all in place yet, but it, um, but yeah, it, there will be certain requirements. So when we do have those, it, it's all coming together at the moment. We're kind of there, but um, yeah, so we will be able to sort of share those hopefully through the network through network rail and having local groups come together that we can we can do that um you know whether actually it needs to be overnight it needs to have platform you know and all of those kind of accessibility um questions as well so yes so noted paul we, we know we need to do that we will do that thanks that's great emma um is there any more questions just conscious of the the time um martin is that a legacy and martin because you've still got your hand up is that a or is that have you got another question no uh, no i've got my hand down all right okay that's great um so emma's due to come speak to us again in july so i think if if um if we all have a think around what topics or any particular focus we might want to have um for that meeting then if you could feed that into myself and alice that'd be really helpful because then we can start maybe honing in a little bit more uh, on the meeting so they're a bit more focused because i think everyone's now up to speed on on what it is i think we have and the flexibility that it offers us all i think and i think that's that's really important and i think that's the thing you've stressed from the start isn't it emma that mm-hmm. anything we do in though that that time period can be linked and hung off railway 200 so in terms of our community rail week our awards or or any other events you've got it's that level of flexibility and also i think i we've always appreciated emma's candidness in terms of there isn't any finances she doesn't have a big pot of money that she can give out so that's why it's just Built, using it to to amplify all what you're already doing and the, and the power of that brand of Railway 200 as that really gathers momentum across the country because I think there will be that sense of celebration hopefully across the country in terms of of, of the whole uh, project. So I think if we could have a think around what we might want to focus on in terms of asking Emma so Emma can do that prep in advance and then we have a, a more um, targeted discussion. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to add before we close? Anything from yourself, Emma, Alice, anything? Um, I was just going to say um, I'll share the slides with yes. you, but also yeah. the um, our form to submit a new story for our website. Uh, yeah, so whilst we don't have, have yeah. any any money, what we do have is national profile um, okay. in order to to help um publicize and 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 that so we and we're obviously always looking for for that so yeah and that helps amplify all our messages which is, which is mm-hmm. great 
So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you once again, Emma, for your time, because I know your time is precious because I do fully appreciate how busy you are doing such a big programme. So um, I'm, I'm not bored. You, I'm not bored. <laughs> no, no, there's no, no day as it is the same, is it, I imagine. No. So so thank you, everyone. Uh, and look forward to seeing you all soon. And thanks, Emma. And I'll speak to you soon. Take, yeah, care. take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.